Cancer-forming agent used in antiperspirant are stored in the lymph nodes because the chemical in the deodorant blocks sweating which cools and detox the body in that area. Most breast cancer grow around the lymph nodes in the upper quadrant of the breast. When you divide the breast in quadrant the upper quadrant is close to the armpit. The purpose of the lymph nodes is to cleanse that area from bacteria and virus. Deodorant fight against bacteria and odor while antiperspirant has aluminium in it to prevent the glands from making you sweat. Using a lot of antiperspirant can cause aluminum to build up in the breast tissues. If you have kidney problems this is another serious problem. Parabens used in deodorants can be absorbed by the skin and function as estrogen after it enters the body. Click the link below for deodorant that does not contain harmful products. Report. We all know about the much chronicled crisis of absentee fathers, especially in black households in America. It's a problem the president has spoken about often. For black families alone, the number of single parent homes has doubled in a generation. Some attempts at a solution have worked. It's something our friend Al Roker looked at recently for a documentary on the subject. And Al Files tonight's Making a Difference report. Marnie McCoy, principal at Link Community School in Newark, New Jersey, says 80% of her students are growing up without their fathers, and that's a worry. Developmentally, this is the transition period in a young person's life. A time, she says, when boys like 7th grader Haru Kirkland especially need their father's steady presence. Sometimes I used to feel like, where did he go when he's coming back? Why did he leave in the first place? <laughs> In 1996, Haru was one of the babies whose births we witnessed while reporting on the high incidence of African-American men who fall out of their children's lives, particularly in the inner city. Haru's father, Keith Kirkland, a veteran of the first Gulf War, was there to pledge his love to his family. You know, everything I do now is for them, you know, the both of them. You know, it's not for me anymore. But a few weeks later, Keith lost his job then went missing. Diagnosed with post-traumatic stress syndrome, this seemingly well-intentioned man has over the years disappeared for weeks at a time. The condition I was in, it wouldn't be missing too much anyway. I do wish that he would be here because it would be more fun. Bro, mine. Haru's mother and other adults in his life do their best to fill the void. A young man who's trying to define what it means to be a man and really enter into his manhood, his father would have said to him, son, this is what it means to be a man. Be a person of character. Respect yourself and respect others so that somebody who's in a gang won't tell them, if you want to be a man, this is what you do. You kill other people. You join a gang. You, you get somebody pregnant. When a father does that first, Anything else that happens after that, it's irrelevant. Perhaps that's one fundamental way to attack a problem that affects millions, one child at a time. Al Roker, NBC News, New York. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Whatever time of day it is that you're listening to Power Talk, I welcome you and I thank you for taking your valuable time and listening to this powerful conversation that will open your eyes, open your mind, your thoughts, and will help you to change your life and to put your life on the right path. That's what Power Talk is all about. The truth should be your reality, so learn how to let the truth be your reality. We will be embarking upon our major discussion that is so pertinent in the black community, the concept of black men pushing the agenda with all their might and power, this blame your mama syndrome. So if you are a single mother, you are quite acquainted with black men and their agenda of blame your mama. And if you're another single mother, you are acquainted with black men's agenda to blame black women <laughs> for everything that they do, everything that they do not do. They want to blame black women for everything that they should do and they are not willing to do. Black men with this blame your mama syndrome and blame black women syndrome have determined that 
somehow they can get through life without getting an education, without doing the work, without putting in the work. Success is your own responsibility and black men do not take on that responsibility. They want to blame the black woman for them not being successful and blame the mothers who have raised their children. Black women have raised black men's children while they go about thinking that being manly, producing children, not feeding them is somehow masculine, which is a lie. It's very punkish and weak and very inhumane, but they want to create this whole lie and perception that um, blame your mother because she raised you. <laughs> On the other side of that, if you understand the English language, when black men say blame your mother because she raised you, they are basically saying or the nation understand that what that means is your father had nothing to do with your life as a person. He was totally absent. He made no contribution whatsoever. And since your father made no contribution, since he was absent, since he left you for dead and starvation and didn't care about your survival, since your black father added no value to your life as a human being, then it's no reason to blame him. Blame the person who did their best to add all value to your life, even though you are not perfect. Black men are saying there's no way you can blame that black man for anything because he was not there and they think that is something that is to be bragged upon. When you have entrusted the entire responsibility upon women, mothers, to work, feed, teach, lead a child, a male child. <laughs> and you as a society, as a black community, you have not charged the man who produced the child for not doing anything whatsoever to form that child into a man. Black men think it's something to be proud of and it's something that they can get away with and it's a gender that they can that they can push. They think it's wonderful. It's something they can brag about. And somehow they can brainwash the entire world. That black women are bees and hoes. And blame your mama syndrome. And blame black women for raising black men. And not doing it good enough and strong enough by herself. Take notice. It is black men who are creating a culture of homosexuality. You look at LeBron James, a big, strong black man wearing dresses. <laughs> when there is no fathers in the community, when these sons are looking at these men and they're saying, OK, this is a kind of man I want to be because the fathers are totally absent. They have abandoned the black community totally and completely. So you have these thirsty sons who do not have a father looking at people like Le LeBron James and saying, oh, oh, he's a king. That is the typical black man. That is my example. That's my mentor. But then you see LeBron James in a dress and a skirt. You have your rap industry that are reaching over the doorknobs of the single parent home and they're Touching the minds, the emotions, the thoughts of those young black boys who have nothing else. Black children have nothing else but their black music. Black fatherless sons have nothing else, no sample of black men other than their black music. Black music have always been the core of the black community. And so black men would send positive messages to these young black boys. They would take the responsibility to be a good role model and example because they knew 
that when they produce music, the white community who listen to their music have a balance. They have a father in the home. The young black boys who listen to their music have no balance. There's nothing in the home. Nothing. Sometimes the black mothers are not there. They are working. There is nobody there. So all these young black boys have is their rap music. Let's be real for a moment. Look at the rap music, the music industry. That is the companion of these young black boys. Because their father has left them for dead and starvation. There are no men there to be nothing to them. So they latch on and hold on to the only men that they see, which is the rap industry. And what do these black men do? They bombard them with being a rap head, trap head, pot head, lean head, all kind of drug heads. They bombard them with homosexuality. These men in the rap industries are the white men bees. A lot of them turn their stink hole into a sex organ for white men so they can get paid. They're prostituting. You look at Chris Brown, who just made the, uh, you know, the music saying he don't want to F no black woman that don't have pretty hair or light skin. You know, quote unquote, what he said. What is he doing? Selling his genitals. That's what he's doing. It equates to prostitution, male prostitution in music. He's not selling nothing but the ideology and the perception that he got a big black genital that he can swing from doorknob to doorknob and that's how he get paid. It's the same thing. So these fatherless sons who have no men in the community, who cares about them, or who value their lives. They have no men in the community who are not trying to sell them drugs, turn them gay, have sex with them, turn them out. White men are not doing this. Black men are doing it in the black community. If you are a single parent, you have to guard your son from black men in the community who are black male predators who are raping your sons and daughters. And then they turn around and blame black women. I mean, at some point, if you are a black woman in the black community, you have to open your eyes. And you have to realize that black lives don't matter to black men. That's why they can go around and call you bees and hoes. Because black lives don't matter to them. That's why black men can push the blame your mama syndrome and blame black women syndrome. Black lives don't matter to black men. You as a black woman don't, woman don't matter. They have become inhumane just like the white slaveholders. They have adopted the same characteristics and they are perpetrating these characteristics in the black community being predators upon children and black women. Blame your mama syndrome. Blame black women syndrome is identical to white supremacy stereotyping black men. <laughs> this is why black men try to encourage you to forget your history and you don't need to go slavery's over with because they are intending to practice it. And if you don't know your history like I do, and if you don't appreciate your history like I do, they can run these games on you. They can't run that game on me because I know my history. And I know that they are emulating white supremacy. And just like it didn't work then, it's not going to work. They're going to fail at this like they fail at everything else because they practice negativism. Everything negative. They're, they're consumers of negativity. And they sell negativity to black boys. And instead of them taking responsibility and stop selling negativity to black boys, knowing there are no men in the home, knowing that single parents are usually absent because they are working, knowing that children have nothing else but their music. 
and the message that they get from their music should be strong, positive message, messages from black men. They fail. They fail at this and will not take responsibility for it. So black men are creating gay black men instead of them accepting that reality. They blame black women and say it's because black women are raising black boys. Why they are turning out gay? Black women should not be raising black boys. It's because black men are not raising black boys. Why they are turning out gay? Why, why don't you say it's because the fathers are not there to be men? And be examples to their son and raise their sons. So the message that come in from the rap industry of weakness, gayness, black men selling their stink hole for money and to get a music deal. Black men compromising black hip hop music and calling black women bees and hoes. Black men not standing up and being men and being examples of petite female dogs. They have set the culture and the precedent for black boys who don't have a father at home to be gay. Thank you for coming by. This is Power Talk. It's been a pleasure. Please like sh and share this message on all of your social platform. It's been a pleasure. Have a wonderful day.